Okay. Uh, yeah, today we continue with axioms, uh, and uh, so we have day two of seminars. And uh, today I would like to discuss uh, uh, axiom photon coupling, uh, which is uh, given by the following Lagrangian. F menu, F menu, dual. Uh, so, and action field, of course. So, as you uh, know uh, from the lectures, action has such uh, uh, anomalous interactions. Uh, normally, so uh, uh, previous day we discussed interaction with gluons, which had GG dual structure. Now, let us discuss uh, this interaction, uh, which is. Uh, which is inter describes interactions with photons and which is very important for uh, experimental detection of uh, the axion particle uh, because most of the experiments are uh, uh, very sensitive to electromagnetic interactions and uh, that's why the best which we have is are the, uh, the electromagnetic detectors and uh, that's why we hope to measure axion with uh, this kind of experiments and uh, they are the most common ones. Uh, so yeah, let, let me start with the uh, first exercise, um, which, uh, uh, which will be uh, deriving the Maxwell equations with, uh, uh, with this uh, uh, interaction. Uh, so uh, yeah, so first let us write uh, the, so we want to find Maxwell equations because uh, they will tell us how the electric and magnetic fields behave uh, in the presence of axion field and that's why how we can uh, detect uh, potentially the axion. So uh, we have full Lagrangian is minus one fourth f mu f mu for standard electromagnetic part, then the axion part, which I already wrote. Okay, we briefly write it again. Uh, then uh, we have also uh, Lagrangian for the axion field. So let me write also d mu a d mu a uh, minus one half m square a, uh, which is the mass term for the axion. So as you remember from the lecture, axion is uh, pseudonym Gaussian boson and it gets its mass from the quantum effects of uh, QCD from instanton effects. Uh, and uh, yeah. so uh, now, so we want to find the equations of motion. Ah, sorry, what happened? Yeah, okay. Ah, yeah, okay. Yeah. So we want to find uh, the equations of motion for this Lagrangian. Uh, for this, we, as usual, write the Lagrangian and uh, integrate by parts. So uh, uh, in the end, so here, f menu, okay, let me, uh, let me remind you, it's, of course, just this, d mu a nu minus d nu a mu. Um, then, because it's contracted with anti-symmetric tensor, we can, uh, uh, just uh, we will have just two, a factor of two in front we, and we can leave only the first uh, part then when we were i also we have to account for the fact that there are like two f tensors here and we have quadratic expression so we will have another factor of two because of this um, so in the end we will have of course the standard d mu f mu uh, here when we integrate by parts the minus will go away uh, then uh, Okay, we will have this term here. So again, we will, uh, okay, this may be, uh, so F dual is one half epsilon mu nu uh, lambda rho F lambda rho. Uh, and uh, here F mu nu will be again given by this. And uh, because of the anti-symmetry, we can uh, actually here uh, again write uh, on the d mu a nu but multiply by two and th then these two and one half they will uh, uh, all uh, the product will be one so we will get uh, in the end plus uh, and we integrate by parts so minus will be 
now plus, and we will have uh, j gamma gamma epsilon mu nu uh, lambda rho d mu a nu and uh, uh, u d uh, lambda uh, a rho. Okay, so here instead we will have axiom field. So uh, and uh, this all uh, equals to zero, and this is variation with respect to the A field. Then, uh, so we see that here we uh, put the derivative outside, and uh, that's why it now acts also on the axiom field. So we will have the terms which will be proportional to the gradient of the axiom fields. Oh, one second. I will create some pages. Okay. Um, So now, uh, now suppose uh, we want to. Uh, so we want to rewrite this also in the three-vector formalism. So how it will look for this? Uh, let us um, uh, write this in terms of the dual field first. So we'll have f dual uh, lambda rho epsilon, of course. Um, equals zero ah no, sorry no. sorry sorry so here we have just zero and uh we knew of course because i put i defined the dual tensor and now um so uh to rewrite this in terms of the electric magnetic fields we uh so uh, let us uh, remember how they uh, look like so in terms of the uh, field strength tensor, the electric field is this, the magnetic field is uh, this, I, J, K, B, K, so epsilon is a is Euclidean uh, levi civita uh, symbol here. Then, uh, okay, so for the dual fields, uh, F dual uh, E, I, zero, uh, we will have to use uh, the definition of uh, the dual fields. So uh, it's one half uh, epsilon uh, I zero GK F GK here. So we see that it will be connected to the, uh, to the magnetic field. So we can uh, write it even more explicitly one half uh, uh, so here this symbol because we have to move zero uh, to in front we'll get minus when we uh, connect the this uh, four uh, four levi civita symbol with the uh, three uh, indices one so we will get uh, epsilon i j k uh, with minus and uh, so f g k is uh, minus uh, epsilon GKL BL. So now we contract this uh, epsilon tensors and uh, we get, uh, uh, so because we contract by two indices at, at uh, each part, we will get actually a factor of two because so epsilon is just a full anti-symmetric tensor with uh, one uh, minus one uh, entries. So if we contract over two symbols, we uh, we touch like two entries and uh, we have one plus one equals two. So we will have two in the end, two multiplied by one half. So in the end, we will have a delta symbol. And actually, this will be just B uh, I. Uh, uh, and uh, the same can be done with the uh, uh, dual F dual I J. Uh, so uh, one half epsilon I. Uh, so I J zero K F zero K um, and uh, we again can uh, ah, okay so plus because zero can be also in the other part so one half I J K zero F zero K um, and uh, fk0 and uh, so 
doing the same as we did here and uh, uh, so basically transforming to the three epsilon tensors we get the result epsilon i j k e k so because this f zero k are connected to the e field so okay now that we have all the components of dual and uh, non-dual tensors it is easy to convert this to the maxwell equations uh, written in the three vector form uh, so we can first put uh, so uh, new index new to zero we will have uh, then d e d i e i so this what left from d new d mu f mu new uh, plus uh, g uh, so okay we we're writing actually uh, this expression here uh, or, or even this because here we have the dual tensor and uh, now this one if nu equals zero this will be mu equals i so we have di fi zero and fi zero is ei so we'll actually get d so the divergence of the electric field plus j gamma gamma d mu and here we'll have if if nu is equals to zero equals zero we will have here the magnetic field because then mu equals to i and we will have uh, in the end uh, just g uh, and the divergence of axion times the magnetic field uh, and uh, this all equals to zero so this is our first uh, Maxwell equation um, then of course uh, we know uh, so we notice uh, that uh, di bi equals to zero so the so we'll also simplify this term and then uh, um, uh, because we don't have magnetic monopoles then uh, the next uh, equation we can derive by putting uh, nu to i so to the spatial index index here um, oh again we take this expression we put nu to i and now we will have contributions uh, here summing both from the zero and uh, spatial components so we will have actually when it is zero we'll have uh, uh, the minus uh, uh, minus time derivative of the electric field when it is a uh, uh, spatial component we will get uh, so from here uh, we will get epsilon b uh, so actually multiplied by the d spatial so the derivative spatial derivative this will be the curl of uh, the magnetic field now, I do, I do. okay uh, and uh, then, uh, so here, we will also have if nu equals to i now, we will have also both contributions from the electric field and from the magnetic field, and electric field uh, will have, will be under the time derivative, and uh, the magnetic field uh, will again be uh, uh, associated with the, uh, some kind of curl acting on the magnetic field, but now also on the axion field. So, okay, uh, instead of that, let me write the equation. Uh, it is just uh, minus EI dot plus, uh, so now we have the curl of B uh, plus uh, G uh, and here, uh, so, okay. Okay, I will not, I will omit this uh, A gamma gamma indices uh, just to be faster. Um, so here we will have uh, G uh, D zero A minus B I uh, and then uh, plus G D J uh, A uh, minus epsilon I G K B E K. Okay. Um, equals zero and uh, okay so this can be of course uh, recast into the familiar form equals e dot and then plus uh, uh, G. then we will uh, so 
uh, expand this uh, derivative here and we will get, uh, so first we will get the curl of phi times axion, then we will get uh, g, uh, the gradient of axion times e. Uh, then we will get, uh, so now coming to the magnetic fields, we will get uh, g a dot b and uh, in the end we will get g a b dot. So why did we expand these derivatives? Just because actually we have another Maxwell equation, uh, which is just a Faraday law, which also does not get modified uh, uh, here. So uh, is uh, just uh, that rod e, the curl of E equals to minus B dot. So that, that's why these two terms actually cancel. And we are left with, uh, with this equation, this, uh, so this equation, this equation, they all form the set of axial Maxwell equations. Uh, so uh, let me rewrite them. Uh, okay, we already have this one. I will add this one. Then we have, uh, so the uh, divergence of E, uh, normally we have he here some charges, but now we'll have axion field. Uh, so the gradient of axion field multiplied by the B field. And uh, then uh, another equation is the curl of, of B. And uh, this one is, uh, uh, so okay, have the familiar part, but then, so instead, uh, usually here we have electric current, but now we have uh, some combination including axions. So uh, actually, uh, uh, the vector product of uh, the gradient of axion times the E and plus G A dot B zero. Um, okay. So from here, uh, we see that actually the uh, effect of axion field on uh, the Maxwell equations is that it induces some uh, uh, something like effective uh, uh, polarization and magnetization, uh, which are otherwise in vacuum is uh, zero. So it acts as a, some kind of medium. And uh, this medium creates uh, here, for example, so uh, if the axion feels, uh, uh, so one of the examples can be uh, axion, uh, the detection of axion dark matter where, um, so we know that uh, axion behaves as a just oscillating uh, field uh, inside the galaxy. So, uh, and we also know that uh, the spatial gradient terms uh, will be suppressed because the velocity of dark matter. So this gradient A, if A is uh, dark matter now, it will be uh, so proportional to the, um, uh, to the Ka, so K is momentum, and then uh, it's uh, suppressed by the dark matter velocity, so uh, which is uh, for the 10 to the minus three in the galaxy. So, so these terms actually are suppressed, but then this term A dot is not suppressed because it's uh, then uh, uh, of order of axion uh, frequency, oscillation frequency, which is actually axion mass. Uh, and uh, then, uh, so the Galescope experiments, for example, what they do is that uh, they create a strong magnetic field, for example, so in the, uh, say, in the microwave cavity, and uh, then uh, they search for the extra magnetic field, which uh, just uh, originates from this term. Uh, so why extra magnetic field? So actually, uh, it is convenient uh, to express this now magnetic and electric fields in terms of the background, background fields. So what one normally does uh, and uh, some uh, action induced uh, contributions. That's BA. And then uh, the action induced contributions are, are small because they are suppressed by this G, which is G gamma gamma which is proportional one over FA, where FA is of order a pH scale, so some very high energy scale. So actually this coupling is very small. 
and uh, these uh, extra contributions to the electric magnetic fields but still detectable for uh, so for a wide range of uh, axiomasses, one can uh, try to detect uh, this uh, electric and uh, magnetic uh, fields which are induced by uh, the axion dark matter and in fact probe uh, the region which is interesting for uh, yeah, so uh, the, the region of uh, on the axion uh, parameter space uh, which is uh, so which provides dark matter yeah, so and uh, then in, in the case of such detection it would be both a solution to the strong cp problem and uh, and uh, the discovery of dark matter so very ambitious project uh, so this e, e0 and b0 are some background fields so they satisfy the uh, so they satisfy uh, the free maxwell equation so actually here we can put uh, uh, b a b a because uh, and here also will be e a induced field here we put zero field so because uh, here if you consider the next uh, uh, so if you consider this uh, perturbation, uh, then uh, it will be very uh, so uh, it will be suppressed with respect to B zero when uh, multiplied by the gradient of action field, uh, and uh, so here we will have uh, B A uh, E A E zero and B, I already wrote B0 here. So we leave only the terms which are first order in G here in the equations. So to, to make them clear. Um, okay, um, now the next task was to rewrite uh, these equations in terms of the effective polarizations and magnetizations. So as I said, um, axion field can be modeled as uh, some kind of medium. Uh, so why is that? So this is, for example, easily seen from this equation. Uh, so the gradient of EA, uh, so how we would write it if we have polarization field, we would write minus gradient P, where P is a polarization vector. So here, because the B is, uh, uh, so B0 satisfies uh, free uh, equations, so we have, uh, that uh, p equals just g b zero a, uh, and uh, uh, now we put this into the second equation uh, to find the magnetization. So, uh, so let me remind you that uh, uh, curl of b uh, is normally uh, so defined as ea so ea dot plus uh, uh, d p e t so the time derivative of the polarization uh, plus uh, the curl of uh, the magnetization so now comparing with this equation we can determine so we already have here the we know what polarization should be so putting polarization here uh, uh, we see uh, that uh, we have uh, so okay let me write we have this term uh, which which is needed plus g a b zero dot uh, and uh, okay so we have this term g uh, so we have also g gradient a times e zero so now how to rewrite, I mean, this term we already have. So this two should correspond to the curl of some vector. Is it true? So actually, yes, because B0 dot is just uh, uh, yeah, due to the uh, Faraday law is just minus, so B0 dot is minus curl of E. Uh, That's why we have here uh, this construction this whole construction can actually is actually just curl acting of uh, a times e so which can be easily understood uh, from, uh, so okay uh, now let me write it explicitly so this expression uh, is actually 
uh, just uh, uh, gradient times e plus a uh, the curl of e and uh, the curl of e is minus b dot minus b dot so yeah uh, now we see that uh, uh, that the magnetization vector should be given by uh, this expression m equals uh, g a e so in the end we have uh, uh, these tensors uh, this uh, vector polarization and magnetization vectors which have very simple form so actually all the axion electrodynamics can be captured by these uh, two expressions. And uh, yeah. So as I said, uh, for axion dark matter detection, what matters is the derivative of P. So P dot can be measured uh, in uh, the galoscope experiments, which look for halo of dark matter in the galaxy. So now uh, let me uh, pass, so I think, uh, this is all with the first exercise. Uh, now the second exercise, which which is connected to this one, is uh, just a second. Uh, Anton, just a second. Mm -hmm. Maybe we can ask for the ten questions up to this point. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the there... exercise. Any questions from the students from the audience? It has been a technical uh, contribution, but uh, still interesting, and uh, maybe somebody wants to. Ask clarifications. Apparently not. So please go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. But yeah, I, I tried to make it very clear. <laughs> discuss it, it was. It was. Of course. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, then. Uh, the, yeah. So. Uh, yeah. So most of again. So want to emphasize that. Yes. Yeah, so most of the detectors of action and all electromagnetic ones so they are based on these uh, Maxwell equations so they are super important in action physics and then okay uh, so um, it's nice that they can be written also in terms of this simple uh, polarization magnetization vectors okay but uh, uh, like I mentioned here the telescope experiments which look for the action dark matter uh, but uh, also there are a lot of experiments uh, about which Andres uh, also uh, talked uh, that um, try to, uh, for example, uh, convert, uh, uh, so just, uh, so to say, laboratory experiments. Uh, so we don't need uh, uh, dark matter in order to detect axions we can create axions by ourselves uh, in the laboratory. So actually the idea of this experiment is that we have a laser beam and we have strong magnetic field. And then uh, as you can see from this, uh, uh, okay, as you can see from this uh, polarization even, so uh, the, if we have external magnetic field, uh, there will be some uh, polarization and uh, then uh, there will be some, uh, electric car like effective electric current which is proportional to p dot so actually if we have strong magnetic field uh, and we have uh, axion uh, uh, coming uh, like uh, uh, if we have a photon field then coming uh, then we expect axion to be created so uh, because uh, yeah so Okay, well, one can understand it also if, uh, so the opposite process, if the axion comes uh, and one has a magnetic field, then one has uh, this uh, extra polarization and one, because axion field, uh, so it's, uh, uh, okay, so the axion field uh, is uh, actually a plane wave here. So uh, this P dot, uh, 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 will be some electric current which will oscillate. So axion oscillates. So uh, the p dot will create some uh, electric extra electric current, effective electric current, uh, which uh, oscillates here. 
and oscillating electric charge, of course, creates the electromagnetic wave. So that's why action, when it comes into the magnetic field, uh, because of this polarization term, it will uh, uh, create uh, some electromagnetic wave. Uh, and uh, this, uh, so th this process is used in uh, the, uh, can be used to create axions. So if we now invert it, we, wave, we have magnetic field, uh, then the axion uh, wave is created. So I mean, the axion particle, uh, and uh, then uh, 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 there is some probability that it will convert actually back to the photon after some uh, lens here and now if we put uh, a wall here so dividing these two regions of uh, the magnetic field then uh, if we shine light uh, so we shine uh, light with the laser at this wall so normally it doesn't pass but if it converts to axion first uh, then uh, the axion is of, of course does not interact with the wall so it passes through the wall and then here it converts back to the photon. So actually we can detect light which uh, shines through the wall um, in this kind of experiments. And they try to detect this uh, phenomenon. So, and uh, this would mean that the axion exists and uh, even we don't need then uh, the that axion forms dark matter. I mean, we can detect it uh, independently of, uh, whether it forms dark matter or not. Okay, uh, but so let us now discuss this setup and uh, try, uh, try to uh, calculate uh, the probability for this process of uh, photon uh, um, coming into action or action coming into photon. Uh, so for this, as I mentioned, all we need are these uh, Maxwell equations actually. Uh, but uh, also supplemented by the equation for the axion field. So actually here uh, we write over the a mu for potential here, this action. Uh, but uh, now we study also the propagation of the axion particle. So we also want to know the equation of motion of uh, the axion. Uh, so yeah, this is uh, again, very standard. If we vary uh, this action, uh, so uh, what we will get is just the D'Alembertian times axion from this. Uh, so then uh, with minus sign because uh, uh, of uh, the, uh, the integration by parts, uh, then we will have, uh, so now uh, minus M square A A. Uh, and from this term, so the variation is, uh, also, ah, sorry, here I forgot square. Uh, here, uh, the variation is very simple and it will be just uh, minus uh, one fourth G A gamma gamma F of dual. So, and this all equals to zero. So this is the equation for of motion for the action field. Uh, and uh, yeah, so now um, let me write, uh, set up here so uh, equation for the axion field is uh, just this where i also rewrote uh, so i will also rewrite uh, uh, action uh, rewrite f of dual in terms of e and b so uh, as we discussed last seminar it is just uh, uh, f of dual with a factor of four. So here we get rid of uh, one force and we get B times E. So again, I, I uh, do this decomposition of the electric field into zero component and uh, the axion induced component. Uh, and since we have a strong magnetic field in the laboratory frame and no electric field, so E zero equals zero. Uh, this why, uh, so, uh, to the first order in the uh, GA gamma gamma, we get this expression B0 times the induced field here. Then uh, uh, we will need also the Maxwell equations, uh, 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 you know, which uh, we can use to derive uh, the, uh, okay, uh, to derive the equation of motion for the photon. 
in presence of uh, the axion field. Uh, so, hmm. okay, let me, uh, so let me rewrite this next equations for the case when we have no electric field. Uh, so they will be simplified, that's why. And also, so let me rewrite them in the case where uh, action, so incoming photon is uh, perpendicular, to, so the direction of the laser beam is perpendicular to the external magnetic field. So in this case, uh, so the action position will also be perpendicular to the magnetic field, and uh, this uh, first term here, uh, so the divergence of E will be equal to zero because here we have scalar product of the perpendicular vectors. So in the end, uh, we have divergence C equals zero, divergence B A equals zero, uh, and uh, uh, okay, the Faraday law is usual, minus B A dot, and uh, Okay. Mm -hmm. And finally, uh, the significant contribution, which contains axion. Uh, so uh, this will be all equations which we need. Um, now, from here, we can, as usual, introduce uh, the vector potential, uh, because uh, B is... Uh, 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 so the divergence of B is zero. Uh, then uh, uh, put into this equation, we see that uh, E can be given as minus E dot plus some uh, gradient of uh, A zero. So, and let us choose the gauge where this part is zero. So A zero, we put it to zero as usual in the uh, gauge when considering uh, the plane electromagnetic waves. Uh, then, uh, uh, and then finally, uh, let us put this B here to this equation and we will have uh, uh, this combination here, which is of course just a uh, um, uh, gradient of uh, the uh, di uh, divergence of A. Ah, sorry, here, it's A. So we put uh, this, uh, expression here. So we have this uh, minus the Laplacian A, uh, and this uh, also can be put to zero uh, in the Coulomb gauge, so um, where divergence of A is equal to zero. Uh, so here we wrote this term. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. The field A has uh, the lower index A because it's the action potential or not ah yes it's uh, so okay i um yeah uh it's really the action potential yes so we can put this a here but uh, I okay will, I, mean, I think uh, afterwards yes so thank you okay uh and uh, yeah so now uh, uh we have here also uh, EA dot, which uh, so substituting this expression now here, we have uh, minus, uh, so okay, in the end we have this uh, minus Laplacian A equals minus A uh, double derivative with respect to time uh, and plus uh, GA dot B0. So this will be a, a uh, the expression for the photon field. So you see that uh, uh, in presence of axions, uh, so that the axion can source electromagnetic wave actually in, in, in the magnetic uh, field. That's what uh, we, the process we study. And uh, this uh, equation now can be also written. So this is minus a dot, right? So we can, in the end, uh, uh, write uh, the following system of equations uh, from here. So we will have uh, D'Alembertian A minus G B zero A dot equals zero and uh, D'Alembertian A plus M square A plus G B zero A dot equals zero. 
Okay, so now this is uh, uh, this uh, system of differential equations uh, can be solved uh, by um, yeah, substituting here the plane wave uh, uh, ansatz for the A and A fields. So yeah, so for example, yeah, one can uh, see that. Uh, uh, if A is proportional to sine, so it is uh, some plane wave, and uh, A is, uh, so then A should be proportional to cosine of omega t minus kz, so that is the direction of uh, the propagation of uh, the wave, axion or electromagnetic. Um, and, uh, so we put this, uh, uh, so we put this sentence here, and uh, we will we see that the D'Alembertian is now just uh, 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 will be given om omega squared minus k, k squared, where k is uh, the uh, momentum. Uh, so here also, uh, and uh, okay, um, yes, but also um, yeah. So uh, and. Uh, that's why we can rewrite uh, uh, this uh, expression. So also here we will have additional minus. Uh, uh, so in the end, we will we can write these equations in terms of uh, the following matrix equations uh, that just uh, minus omega, okay. uh, omega squared minus k squared uh, a a. So here I also uh, uh, introduce okay uh, let me okay we always just consider a which is uh, 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 which is aligned with the magnetic field so parallel to the magnetic field so here uh, one can also write explicitly a parallel so that uh, we see that actually the polarization of the resulting electromagnetic wave will be uh, uh, aligned with the external magnetic field. So this can be seen also from here. Uh, so, okay, we can explicitly write A parallel because of course also there will be polarization A perpendicular. So the one to the, yeah, the polarization which mixes with axion uh, is uh, the parallel one. Uh, so, and uh, here we get simple expression minus G B B zero omega times g b zero omega m a squared so this all equals to zero so here as we uh, yeah, put these expressions here and uh, do the time derivative uh, so now uh, now we see that uh, to obtain the uh, so uh, that uh, these two fields mix, and uh, then uh, by diagonalizing this matrix, we can actually obtain uh, the uh, the propagation eigenstates and uh, see how uh, the electromagnetic wave uh, will uh, um, will go into the axion wave. Uh, so, but before this, uh, let us simplify this expression because. Actually, we consider vacuum, so uh, omega, so uh, which means that uh, omega is uh, very close to k. So actually, uh, okay, we have k equals n times omega, and is a uh, index of refraction. So, and we consider, so well, normally in these experiments, uh, very good vacuum is maintained. So. That's why we can say that omega is uh, equal to k, and uh, this will be just two omega omega minus k, and then we divide everything by two omega, and in the end we get uh, this uh, uh, expression omega plus zero delta 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 a. Okay, I will now explain the notations in a moment. Uh, so. Okay. Um, so here, delta is uh, 
uh, delta G B uh, divided by two. Um, um, yeah, delta A is uh, M squared of action divided by two omega. Uh, and uh, actually we missed, okay, we also have minus sign. Um, where was it? Omega squared minus. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay. So here we still have, okay. I see here we should have minus because, uh, so, uh, we want to express uh, uh, the axion and A fields as, so this vector is proportional to I omega T minus KZ. Uh, that's why we get I square here and we get minus. So in the end, uh, uh, we get this uh, expression. And uh, now uh, we see that, uh, yeah, so interaction and eigenstates are A and so uh, big A and small A, action and uh, photon. Uh, but when they propagate, uh, they mix. So actually, uh, we can introduce propagating eigenstates. So, uh, which will be connected by cosine theta by rotation to the interacting ones. So here the terminology, so in the process is completely analogous, for example, to the oscillations of neutrinos. Um, okay. uh, so uh, we can introduce propagation uh, uh, states of uh, fo photon and axion. So this will be some mixed of, a mix of uh, the sort of physical like interacting axon and photon uh, states. And uh, in the end, uh, what we will uh, have is that the physical interacting states, uh, so at some, uh, as a function of uh, the Z coordinate uh, are given by some so matrix, which is a function of Z times uh, Uh, so, uh, times the axion and uh, <coughs> and electromagnetic fields at the beginning of uh, uh, their propagation. So actually, we can think of it as if uh, so. Here, uh, in the beginning, we want that we have no axion, uh, but we have electromagnetic field. So here it's zero, but we have electromagnetic uh, wave. Then, uh, which is so, the laser shines electromagnetic wave, then it enters the magnetized region where the propagation eigenstates differ from uh, the uh, interaction eigenstates. Uh, that's why uh, we have, uh, so here uh, is Z, and uh, then, uh, so here is zero where uh, Z equals to zero where we have only electromagnetic wave, but then because uh, of the mixing, uh, we will get uh, some non-zero axon component. Uh, and uh, this mixing matrix can be uh, obtained uh, so by diagonalizing this matrix. So when, so first of all, if we diagonalize this matrix, we get uh, this uh, uh, propagation eigenstates, right? So the ones which do not mix uh, when uh, they propagate uh, uh, here in the magnetic field. Uh, so uh, these ones uh, will have uh, uh, mm -hmm. so these ones will propagate with uh, 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 with e to the i uh, so omitting this contribution which is standard just uh, plane wave contribution they will propagate like uh, e to the i uh, uh, each of the I, uh, so one of them, uh, some 
uh, say delta uh, so this kind of delta so okay uh, and the other one minus i delta a z uh, so this uh, uh, this is what we obtain when we uh, diagonalize this matrix uh, uh, so okay uh, let me write explicitly this delta parallel uh, is uh, one of the uh, eigenvalues of uh, the matrix uh, so it will be given by one half delta a uh, plus minus square root delta a squared plus four delta squared okay uh, so uh, and uh, parallel or a so uh, depending on the sign here so this uh, eigenvalues uh, of the and uh, uh, the states will uh, propagate uh, the propagation states will have these phases uh, and so the propagation states do not mix uh, now uh, so okay if this is m uh, okay, this m tilde, then uh, the a uh, and a the propagation states uh, they change like this. Okay. Uh, And now if we want to convert, so they change like this with this matrix, which is uh, obtained by, uh, uh, so diagonalizing uh, the propagation matrix. Uh, and now uh, if we want to convert to interaction, so like to normal photons and axions, so interaction uh, states, uh, we have to act with this matrix, uh, uh, both, uh, uh, at the beginning and at the end of uh, the journey uh, of this uh, action uh, photon state. So in the end, what we will have here uh, is that uh, this matrix M, uh, so, okay, let me write this as S. So this matrix is S. Uh, then this matrix M should be given as S to the minus one uh, M, tilde s so we convert first these states to the propagation ones then we propagate with m tilde according to the eigenvalues of uh, the uh, of uh, this uh, matrix and then we convert back to the interaction states uh, okay and then uh, uh, okay then the explicit uh, expression for this m can be obtained in terms of uh, uh, of the parameter delta a z so let us denote this as zeta and uh, then uh, actually we can expand uh, in uh, the ang uh, in the mixing angle uh, so theta so we can expand in the mixing angle theta uh, the whole expression because uh, normally uh, delta is much smaller than de delta a so for actually for this light shines through wall experiments uh, this uh, mixing is small uh, that's why the mixing angle is small uh, and expanding to the first order in uh, theta we get we get uh, the following expression uh, so m at zeta is uh, so it will be m0 plus uh, theta m1 uh, where m0 is uh, uh, independent of theta so the contribution which is independent of theta and is given by this and m1 is uh, so first order in theta. 
and we see that uh, so at this uh, so when uh, theta when they have some mixing so theta is non zero we, uh, yes uh, to the first order we get this uh, uh, this matrix which relates uh, interaction uh, eigenstates uh, before the magnetic field domain and after the magnetic field domain okay so then uh, it's very easy to get uh, the mixing because now uh, if we uh, the probability of mixing of uh, photon into axion will be given uh, just uh, so looking at this expression by uh, the off diagonal uh, uh, term uh, of this matrix squared uh, and uh, this uh, so looking at this expression, okay, one minus E I delta A Z square. Uh, okay. And uh, theta square. And this can be written, so, okay, this can be easily written as, uh, because, yeah, so, if you uh, extract from here this factor, you will get uh, the usual expression for the sign in terms of the complex exponents, and you will get four theta square times sine square delta a z divided by two because of this two here. And uh, okay, let me now rewrite it in terms of uh, the physical. Uh, parameters so this will be 16 g squared b0 squared omega squared divided by ma to the fourth sine squared of uh, ma squared divided by four omega z so this tells us uh, uh, what will be the intensity of uh, the laser beam Oh, oh, of uh, sorry uh, yeah what is the number of axions which are produced from uh, the laser beam and of course if we now consider the opposite situation when axion converts to photons uh, this formula will be the same but now it will be the uh, intensity intensity of uh, the photon re regenerated photon beam and uh, in the so now let us also consider the the case where the oscillation length of uh, uh, the axion is uh, much uh, smaller, uh, uh, much bigger than the physical scale of uh, the magnetic field. So uh, normally this is also a good approximation. So actually this can be written as that divided by oscillation length uh, of the axion field uh, and then And Julian, do you hear me? Anybody heard me? Yeah, we can hear you, but uh, we can't see the speaker anymore. Okay, thank you, Simone, for the feedback. Uh, apparently, it's not uh, connected anymore.
I think it was very close to the end because she had got the, the final result basically from the mixing, from the possible detection even of this uh, of this uh, action field, uh, which was very interesting. I think uh, a good uh, complementary to to what Professor Ringwald uh, told us uh, in the previous days. But I don't see him coming back. Ah, here, here it is. Anton. Ah, yeah, uh, sorry, sorry. Uh, no problem, no problem. Okay, you, you are in, so please yeah. uh, try to conclude to finish your... Yeah, uh, I was actually just saying the last sentence. And... This is what, uh, what I got, in, in fact. It is what I was saying to, to the rest of the audience. Thank yeah. You. Okay, yes, yeah, so this is just... Uh, yes, yeah, so here we get... Uh, if that is uh, is uh, the lens of the domain where the magnetic field is maintained, so what we get is that uh, uh, the probability scale says, uh, so it's just G squared, B squared, L squared. And this means that if we have now light shines through wall experiment uh, with magnetic field, uh, which converts into axions and then back uh, into uh, the, into the electromagnetic wave, into the laser, uh, then uh, this we have to square because we have two conversions. So actually, in this case, uh, uh, so uh, p gamma a gamma will scale as uh, b to the fourth, l to the fourth. So that's why in this experiment they try to make large magnetic fields and uh, long uh, dom domains. So yeah, uh, that's all. Uh, and yeah. So are there any questions? Thank you very much, Anton. Very, very useful. Any question from the audience, please? Apparently, no. Okay. <laughs> Hello. Oh, please. I, uh, there is some, I think. Yes. Uh, yeah, I uh, just have a question. When you say very large magnetic field, can you give some value, maybe? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so normally, I mean, uh, here, the uh, the more the better. But uh, currently, what uh, uh, so normally one uh, has a uh, order magnetic field of order, so several Tesla or yeah, so till, okay. yeah, because uh, so for example, in cast. Uh, uh, so yeah, I would say like eight uh, probably Tesla or something. In cast experiment, they use uh, the mag the uh, magnetic the yeah, the coil from uh, the one one of the uh, from uh, the CERN so from LHC and uh, yeah, so it's like eight Tesla. I would say ten Tesla. Yeah, I guess uh, it's uh, the. Magnetic field should be really stable in time for for that. Or uh, yes, yes, of course. Yeah. So yeah. So and the, yeah. So actually, the best what we have now is like several Tesla. Yes. Okay. I mean, maximum ten, but no, 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 I think less than ten. Yes. Thanks. Any other contribution, comment, question? No, 